Good afternoon. My name is Lori Williamson, and I am the Director of Children's Ministries here at Second Presbyterian Church. Although we cannot come together to worship on Monday, Thursday, we can still worship with our family in our own homes, and I hope this interactive service will help in doing that. As I stated before, this is an interactive worship, which means that you will be asked to participate in various ways. To fully participate, I ask that you view this worship from a portable device, if possible. As we travel to different areas of the church, you will be asked to travel to different areas in your home. Worship will be presented in four segments, and there will be instructions on ways to participate prior to each segment and music to conclude each segment of worship. This is a pre-recorded service, so remember you can stop and start as many times as you need to. If you need more time for a certain activity, just hit the pause button. If you have small children that are participating with the family and you need to divide up the segments to keep their attention, then that certainly is a possibility as well. There is no right or wrong way to experience this worship as long as it helps to bring you and your family a better understanding of Monday Thursday and closer to Christ. Teresa Larson. I am the seminary intern here at Second Pres, and I invite you to hear these words from Exodus chapter 12, verses 24 to 28. You shall observe this rite as a perpetual ordinance for you and your children. When you come to the land that the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep this observance. And when your children ask you, what do you mean by this observance? You shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord. For he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt, when he struck down the Egyptians but spared our houses. And the people bowed down and worshipped. And the Israelites went and did just as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. Passover is a Jewish holy day that has been celebrated since Bible times. On Passover, the people remember how God saved them when they were slaves in Egypt, passing over their houses during the final plague. During Passover, Jewish people retell the story of their exodus from Egypt. A Seder meal accompanies Passover. Foods are taken at this meal that help in the retelling of this story. So we have here a mixed fruit spread called a cheriset, which is made of apples and walnuts and helps to recall the mortar which the Israelites were forced to make when they were slaves in Egypt. We have some bitter herbs here that represent the bitterness that the Israelites endured during their escape from Egypt. And we also have some unleavened bread, bread made without yeast, which represents the quick exodus from Egypt because there was no time for the bread to rise. This is where we begin on Monday, Thursday. Jesus was gathered with the disciples to celebrate Passover. Then he added something to this meal. He wanted them to remember the story of his time with them. He told his disciples 
that when they broke bread together, they should remember his body. And when they drank wine together, they should remember the life that he gave for them. Listen to these familiar words from Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 28. While the disciples were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for so many, so that their sins may be forgiven. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the stories that you have given to us that teach us about your extraordinary love. As we continue to move through this service and remember the story of your last supper with your disciples, open our hearts and minds to hear this story with fresh ears so that we may continue to be transformed by your love. Amen. Hello, my name is Jordan Aiken, and I am the Associate Pastor for Youth at Second Prez. Hear these words from John. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. And after he washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. Imagine that you have spent all day playing in the dirt with bare feet and you went to your friend's house and y'all drew on the sidewalk together with chalk and when it is time to go home your parents will not let you inside before you clean your feet off when jesus was on the earth people wore sandals and walked on a dirt road everywhere they went by the end of the day their feet were filthy. During the Passover meal, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. This job was usually done by a servant with low status and little power. The disciples couldn't stand the thought of their leader stooping that low. Jesus told the disciples he wanted them to be leaders by serving people. He didn't want the disciples to think they were too important to do what needed to be done. That included washing people's feet. In this time of social distancing, we are constantly being reminded to wash our hands. While I take the time now to wash my hands, I want you to wash each other's hands. 
Remember Jesus washing his disciples' feet? How he asks us to serve? And during this time of this pandemic, how washing our hands is serving others. Here is a prayer to say while washing your hands. We are humans relearning to wash our hands. Washing our hands is an act of love. Washing our hands is an act of care. Washing our hands is an act of service. Helping us return to ourselves, washing away that which does not serve. Amen. Hello, I'm Nathan Sauter, the Associate for Community Life here at Second Presbyterian. And hear now these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 13. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you now cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another also from the Gospel of John, chapter 15. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in him, my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. When I was a kid, I loved being on the playground. There were so many things to do, and all my friends were there in one place. You could swing, you could climb, you could slide, you could dig, you could play tag. Whatever your imagination could hold could be done on the playground. We're very fortunate to have this playground at our church. And this playground is unlike so many other playgrounds. This one has some of the coolest things. It has swings and slides, but it also has a sandbox and a cave and a ship with a river and a pumping station and a house with a mud kitchen and a garden. It's a pretty awesome playground. And when we first started using this playground, we were so excited. We all wanted to jump in right away and begin using everything all at the same time. And we did. But we soon found out that having these great things and playing with them resulted in some broken tools and unusable equipment. We realized we needed to have some rules. Now, most of us don't like rules. We get tired of hearing, don't do this and don't do that. 
It seems as if most rules are about what we should not do. Do not lie. Don't say hurtful things. Don't forget to brush your teeth. We have some other rules that are important these days. Don't go to the movies. Don't go shopping unless it's necessary, like the grocery store. Now we can't even play on the playgrounds. And the list goes on and on and on. There are many, many, many things we must think about, things we should not do. But Jesus says, I give you a new commandment. A commandment is a rule. But Jesus turns it around and tells the disciples what they can do. Love one another, just as I have loved you, so you also must love one another. It's only one rule. That should be easy, right? Well, no. <laughs> it's a really difficult rule. Because not everybody is lovable. Sometimes we must be creative and think of ways to show kindness to someone who is not kind. The cool thing is that if we keep this one rule in mind, it makes the other do not rules a lot easier. If we think about what we can say or what, what we can do to love one another, we won't make the mistake of being hurtful or putting other people in harm's way. In this time of social distancing and being in close quarters with our families, I wonder how we might live out Jesus' example to love one another. Let us pray. Oh God, you have given us this commandment to love one another, and you modeled for us what it means to love, so much so that you gave your very life for us. So now may we give our lives for one another as we seek to love each other as you have loved us. The one who is love, Jesus. Amen. Hi, I'm Steve Jester. I'm pastor here at Second Presbyterian Church, and it's uh, my pleasure to be with you for this Monday Thursday time of worship. Hear this reading from the Gospel according to John, 15th chapter. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and become my disciples. 
As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was in my yard the other day and I found a branch that had fallen from a tree. And I looked over at that beautiful tree from where it came and I wondered how long had that branch been disconnected from that tree? Well, it must have been quite a long time. There were no leaves on it at all. It was completely dead. In fact, I wouldn't even call it a branch. I'd call it a stick. Branches cannot grow, they cannot live without the tree. All the nutrients that they need to live come up through the trunk of that tree. And without that tree, the branches will never have blooms or leaves. If a branch falls from a fruit tree, there will never be fruit on the branch at all. If I take a dead branch, and I plant it in the ground and I water it, it won't come back to life. It'll just be an old stick in the mud, so to speak. Staying connected is important, especially during this time when staying healthy at home means only seeing our closest family members. We need to stay connected to each other because it promotes our own mental health, we need to nurture relationships to make sure that the people we love, family and friends, are safe. And it's important to stay spiritually connected. Jesus wants us to remember that when we stay connected to him, then like those branches on a tree, we are better able to receive and then share God's love and God's healing and forgiveness. Jesus is also reminding us in this scripture that it's possible for us to become separated from him. However, unlike the branch that fell in my yard, if ever we do become disconnected from Jesus, that doesn't mean we're disconnected forever. Instead, we can and we are invited to reconnect with him. And then when we are reconnected with Jesus, we can receive all the same gifts that Jesus receives from God. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me, says Jesus. Abiding in Christ, settling down and living in Christ, staying connected with Christ so that his life can work in us and through us to produce fruit. What a comforting thought. Changing our healthy at home to safe at home in Christ. And let us pray together. Gracious God, we thank you that we are at home in you, that we are safe and healthy when we are connected to you. We thank you that you reach out to us, that you hold us close. And as we observe this Holy Week, this Monday, Thursday time, we remember the new commandment that you give us to love one another in the same way that you have loved us. Help us to love, help us to stay connected, 
We ask it in your holy name.